All right. Here we're going to talk about metamorphosis, and what you'll need to have is your handout uh, out beside you, so you can be filling it in as we're talking about it. All right. So first, uh, just to discuss, think about something about your body that changes over time. As you can see, from the picture right there, your teeth change, your body changes. A lot of different things change about you over time. So we're going to be looking not so much at human body changing over time, but we're going to be looking at how insects and amphibians change over time, because they go through a little bit of a different process, at least for the most part, most of them do, than we do. So beginning, metamorphosis is the change in form from one stage of life to another. So for example, going from a caterpillar to a monarch butterfly, as you can see from the picture. And make sure you're, again, you're filling in the appropriate words as I'm talking about this. So you'll have your notes ready for tomorrow. Beetles, butterflies, moths, uh, many more insects go through complete metamorphosis. There's, and when we talk about complete metamorphosis, it's a completely different process than incomplete. So make sure you're paying attention to the big differences. That's going to be a key to the understanding of this, this section, this unit, is that you understand there is a big difference between the two. Complete metamorphosis, you have an egg, hatches into a worm-like larva. It eats, grows until it's what we call a pupa. And it rests there until it emerges as a winged adult. Now, the key things to gain from this is you understand that again this is an egg and you'll have to be able to label these on a diagram when you come in tomorrow this is what we call a larva these are key words key vocabulary that you need to understand this is a pupa and then you have your adult so those are the four key words egg larva pupa and adult that you need to understand for tomorrow So for complete metamorphosis, you can see the diagram posted right here. Again, you have an egg, the larva, the pupa, the adult. And like everything in science, it's uh, all a cycle. You know, you go from your egg that gets hatched by the adult, or laid by the adult, turning into the larva, the pupa, and the adult. Now there's a different type of metamorphosis that we've been talking about, or that I mentioned, called incomplete metamorphosis where you have an egg hatches to form a nymph that looks like a small adult. And the key word right here is that it, it's called a nymph. And it looks almost identical, the organism looks almost identical to what an adult organism of, would look like of that insect. Gradually it grows into an adult, forms wings. So you can see, again, there's there's that similarity. Now, this one is the uh, metamorphosis that we could have a pretty decent comparison to what we go through uh, as humans. Because you have a small adult growing into a large adult, laying an egg, and then going through this process that way. There's an, a very distinct difference between the two as you'll discuss. <coughs> So again, incomplete metamorphosis, you have an egg that gets hatched by the adult, turns into a nymph, which the nymph is just, again, a small version of the adult. Now you may say, whoa, Mr. Richards, that right here, the nymph, doesn't look like the adult. It is in more form, that's how they are the same organism, and it's not going through a what we would call a complete metamorphosis. During incomplete metamorphosis, some insects or nymphs uh, live in the water. And pretty self-explanatory name for that, they're called aquatic nymphs because they live in the water. Dragonflies in, are the most common example of aquatic nymphs. So what you have is the egg hatches, forms a nymph, lives in the water for a short while. The egg emerges from the nymph with a full set of wings. 
or the adult, I'm sorry, merges from the egg for the full set of worms, forming a fully grown adult. So as we look through the process, you have your mink going down to your adult, moving all the way over to your fully grown adult. So that's why you know we go back. You know, this is kind of like an outer shell. I think that allows it to live in water until it can fully develop into having the big set of worms that we see. Frogs go through, and you may have talked about this in earlier grades, but frogs go through a type of metamorphosis. Looking at the diagram right here, they hatch as an egg, turn into a tadpole, turn into a froglet, and eventually into the adult. So quiz, and you might want to pay attention to these because these are the questions that are going to come up on your quiz tomorrow at the end of class. What are the two kinds of insect metamorphosis? I'll give you a second. Complete and incomplete. What are the four stages of complete metamorphosis? That one may be a little bit more difficult, so you might want to pause it, rewind, go look back at, at the presentation, come back and answer this. You have your egg, your larva. So you have your egg right here, moving to the larva moving to the pupa, moving to the adult. What are the three stages of incomplete metamorphosis? We have the egg, the nymph, and the adult. And there again, that's incomplete metamorphosis. With incomplete metamorphosis, it's not changing from an organism that doesn't look like it's, in a, like it's adult form. It already looks like the adult form in a primary form just grows and gets larger. What is the what is different about aquatic nymphs? That should be pretty pretty easy. Right? They live in water until they grow young and then they become adults. And the last question, what is the missing stage of complete metamorphosis? We have the egg, blank, pupa, and adult. And if we got this one, that one is A, the larva. And that concludes our my notes or presentation on metamorphosis. Be ready to be able to draw a diagram, fill in the different stages, uh, and take the quiz.